let's go grab ourselves a Jesus moment. Amen. All right? Now you're going to put your Jesus lens on, watch what Jesus does with stuff. What Jesus does with stuff, unforgettable. It's like you walk away and say, can't see that the same way again. Christ has made the difference. Mark chapter 11, verse 20. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, we're jumping into the end of a story. You can tell because we didn't do anything about last night. It's just in the morning. But all of us know this story. Almost immediately when we see that fig tree dried up by the roots, our mind goes, hey, I know what Jesus did to that tree yesterday, right? All right, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, 21. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. If we stopped right here, and you could because there's a period, and you could say that's a quaint, nice little story. Jesus was like, this is how you take care of the fig tree in a yard. But it really wouldn't mean much to us, especially if we read it literally, because that means if your apple tree don't give you the kind of apples you want, just walk out in the backyard and curse it. Well, everything's solved, <laughs> except apples, which you still don't have any of. And so the story really doesn't resolve much other than didn't like the tree in the first place. Now I don't have to do anything with it. Just let it rot out and die and we'll pull it up later. And then Jesus throws something in that seems completely out of left field. Look at the next verse. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, ding, 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 by the way, for all of us Zechariah 4 listeners who've been mountainizing for the last 20 minutes, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the things that he has says will be done, will have whatever he says. Now, if we take Mark eleven twenty three 23, and we don't know anything about Zechariah 4, and we don't know anything about Isaiah chapter 40, and we don't really know anything about metaphoric mountains, then we might think that if we have enough faith, we can talk to stuff in the natural world and move it out of our way. And I say to you, good luck with your attempt. Let me know how it goes. So you go find your unnatural mountain and believe with all your heart that God's going to knock it down. Give me a call. Keep your phone out. Video record that. Let me know what's happening. You're still going to be there. When the Lord takes you home, believing he's going to knock that physical mountain down because he's not talking about literal mountains. But how many of you know he sure is talking about mountains? Now you know what I'm talking about. There's a big difference in a literal mountain and a mountain. And he's talking about a mountain. But the odd thing is where he drops this in. Where, how do we get from bearing fig trees and moving mountains? Why did he make that turn? Okay, Because it's the end of a greater story. I love biblical sandwich stories. Story, side story, story, these are the same thing. All right? You got something happening here and something happening here that are the same thing. Let me give you a for instance from Mark 11. Jesus walks into town and he's hungry. So he walks over to a fig tree because he wants to eat a fig off of it. And there are no figs. And so he says, cursed are you fig tree. You shall bring forth no more figs. Story number one. Side story. And in the morning, Jesus came back to the fig tree that had no figs. And Peter said, look, there's a tree that dried up yesterday. And Jesus said, have faith in God. You could even say to the mountain, be removed, cast in the sea. Don't doubt in your heart. Believe whatever it is you say. You shall have whatever it is you say. And you go, what in the world happened in the middle? Because whatever happened in the middle probably had something to do with what was happening on the front and the back. And what happened in the middle is that Jesus walked into the temple and he saw money changers blocking the access for the average man to get to his father and the house of prayer had become a den of thieves. And Jesus fashions a whip and knocks over some tables and says, how dare you keep people from accessing my father? And you say, well, what's that got to do with a tree? Because Israel's allegorical story told them they were the fig tree of the earth. And they were supposed to be food for the nations. And they failed. And in John 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine and you are the branches. I am the true vine. Who's the fake vine? All of you that think you're the vine are no longer get to be the vine. Vines and fig trees were synonymous language in the Old Testament. Let everyone set under his fig and vine. 
That was an allegory for the favor of God. Jesus goes, I, John 15, I am the true favor of God. No one else is the true favor of God. But Israel had the idea that they were the fig tree. They were the ones who were God's chosen. And when Jesus went to them to receive fruit, were there fruit? No. He walks into their temple. There's no fruit. So he knocks their tables over and walks back out to the tree. Can you now tell what the tree represents? The barrenness of whatever's going on in that temple. And that temple originated at Sinai. It was a performance, works-based, religious experience where you climbed up to God, not where God climbed down to you. And it is mirrored every time we preach to people, you better do if you want God to bless you. And Jesus walked into that temple and knocked the tables over and he bookended it by removing the fig tree that had no fruit. And what he's saying to his disciples is the greatest obstacle to people receiving me. I'm going to speak to you for a moment through try through what I see Jesus saying in Mark. Okay. Jesus says to his disciples, the greatest obstacle that people have to receiving me is their own performance, their own works, the law. And I come to them to receive fruit and they have none. And do you know why they have none? Because they've made my father's house a den of thieves and they don't give people access to the father. And if you don't give people access to the father, there's no fruit on you worth having. And the only way for me to get rid of that is to speak to that mountain and knock it out. So guess what you need to do? When you come up against something that's blocking, that's hindering, that's too big for you to overcome, I want you to do what I did. I spoke to the fig tree and cursed it and it fell. He said, but you get to speak to mountains. Now, they have Zechariah 4 here and here because they were raised on it. So when Jesus says to them, say to a mountain, their mind goes, Zerubbabel had a mountain. And God told him it won't be by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And that all he has to do is speak to that mountain. And what was it he said to that mountain? If I could remember what Zerubbabel said to that mountain, and then as your mind goes back, you realize that Zerubbabel speaks a new covenant word. Because the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. So what God told Zerubbabel to do was proclaim forth what could only be found in Jesus. And as you proclaim what can only be found in Jesus, there's not a mountain you encounter that has anything it can do against you. And they could never understand that in Zechariah 4, but they can understand it in Mark 11, standing next to a scrawny, dried up, cursed fig tree, because Jesus said, never again shall the denial of access to my Father be what blocks you from the blessing. And if you see something in that way, if you see a mountain too big for you to transverse, if you see a mountain too big for you to get over, if you see something that blocks you from my Father, pour my daddy's grace on that mountain. Speak, the, speak what only comes through Christ into that mountain.